Hi folks, welcome to Fish Hounds Outdoors. We got an exciting show planned for you this week. Um, today we're on Lower Lake Champlain and we're going to be fishing for crappies. Um, the crappies have started to move out of the shallows and start to stage on some of the structure. And uh, yesterday we were out and we had a pretty good day. So we're back today filming and hopefully we can get some good techniques and uh, show you guys what we do here on Lake Champlain fishing for these crappies. I just want to show you, Navionics plays a major factor in um, putting us on fish day to day. And what we do is, uh, you know, we find these things out here. We find stumps, we find old railroad beds, we find, um, you know, anything you can find down there, some kind of a humps, holes. And when we find these, the fish, that's what the fish like to hold on. In this case, we actually found um, an old log that when the water was high, got drifted down the river and uh, it actually lodged here. Well, this particular log has been here for about five years and every year I come back to this log I mean it's just loaded with crappies so um, it's been really good to us and you know back in the day we used to look over here on the shore and say okay I'm gonna line up that tree with this house and then this there and then you'd always try to you know triangulate to find these uh, find the structure and nowadays with modern technology it's become a lot easier and what you see here is I don't know if we can zoom in on this a little bit Mike but uh, on the graph here, you can see we have a waypoint marked, and this waypoint happens to be well, that What we're going to do is we're actually going to take and basically connect the dots. So here, this is us heading towards it, and as you can see, we need to head a little bit to the left. So we're going to head a little bit to the left, and this is our trail coming in. We're going to actually position ourselves right over that. So this just saves so much time for us. As we get closer to our icon, we'll actually start looking over at our graph because what we want to do is we want to look for our structure and we're going to go a little bit past it. Um, today the wind's out of the south and what we're doing is we actually we come in from the south we went to the north side and we're headed back over this. Um, we actually want to go over this icon and then we're going to hook with the anchor and drift back over. Uh, hopefully we're going to be uh, vertically jigging these with the Vexlar and also casting out beside that structure and slowly reeling that reeling the jig back. Now what we're doing here is we're actually vertically jigging the side of this structure with the x bar. And just like winter fishing, you'll see my baits down here and you see the fish coming up off the bottom. This one's gonna come right up for us. And we're just basically down oh, there's one right there. Well, now this is uh, one of two methods that we use. Um, so we'll either, if we're over the top of the structure when the boat spins in, we'll actually fish with the Vexlar and we'll jig them right up off the side of the structure. And if the boat swings away, we'll actually cast out. And we'll show you that technique here in just a bit. See if I can entice that. And basically, we're just jigging like we do ice fishing. I'm going to bring that up and you see that mark's coming right up for it. Give it a little twitch. Here's a better one. Oh, that's a nice fish. I'm swing them in here. What a beautiful fish. What we're using here, I like to use uh, Mackie plastic, but when we're fishing close to this structure, you tend to uh, hook onto it a lot. So what we found is these marabou jigs, they eat these marabou jigs, you know, pretty good. Uh, some you, some days you, it gets tough where you have to uh, put on your plastic, um, your Mackie plastic, uh, but for the most part you can catch them on these marabou jigs. And these are priced so well you can get ten of them for a couple bucks. do her business. Okay, now we're going to show you another technique that we use when we're fishing over structure. Uh, sometimes the winds will pick up and you can't stay right there on the structure jigging them with the Vexlar. So what we'll do is we'll back off from the structure a little bit. We'll stay anchored to the windward side 
and we'll actually mark the structure. Here we have the structure marked with a buoy. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take our jig and we're going to cast out along the side of it. You want to uh, you want to get as close to the structure as possible without obviously hitting it. And what we do is we cast out, let it fall to the bottom, and then once it hits the bottom, you see your line will go slack, and then just slowly retrieve that back along the bottom. As you can see, I'm just barely spinning this. I mean, you can either slowly retrieve it just to keep it up off the bottom. Sometimes I like to know where bottom is. I'll actually let it fall to the bottom, and I'll give it a little bump up as I'm reeling, and let it fall to the bottom, and bump up. And you just do that slow retrieve. And, you know, when you get back to the boat, don't just reel that in, because sometimes these crappies will chase that, and they won't commit until that's, you know, a foot below the surface. So this time, we were a little bit too far out from the structure. So what we're going to do, you can see this bait gets a really good action in the water. And what you, you pretty much, what, you want to always figure out what that bait is doing down there. So I like to, uh, you know, I like to look at my bait in the water and say, well, if I'm bouncing that little bit, what's that bait doing? As you can see, if you let that fall and rise, that bait, it just looks like a minnow or some kind of bait fish swimming around there. So what we're going to do is, we got our structure here, we got it marked. I'm going to get a little bit closer to it and see if we can't pick one up. And cast out, watch for it to fall. Sometimes when the fish are on, you'll actually see your line, you'll get a hit on the drop if you're on the right spot or the fish are on a good feeding frenzy. So now we're at the bottom, we got the slack in the line, and we're going to start that slow retrieve nice and close to the structure. You're just waiting to feel a little tick on the line. Just a couple little bump there, but nothing too major. We're gonna still work. There's one right there. Ooh, we're gonna play there. <clears throat> one thing to try not to do is don't <laughs> hook your marking buoy. crappy there. So that's another technique that we use. Uh, I, I hope you can use some of these techniques. Uh, these work wherever we go, so I'm sure these fish are the same fish that you guys got. And I um, hope this helps you guys out. We're going to put her back and let her go swim and do her business. What a blast we've been having out here today, catching these white crappies on structure. I think we've probably already caught about 75, 80 crappies. On this week's Fish Hound Finds, we're going to show you about the rod that we're using. Uh, this rod is the Jason Mitchell Elite Series Hypermodulus 5 foot ultralight action spinning rod. What a mouthful that is Jason, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, the, I seen these rods came out with this 5 footer. I said man I gotta try these rods out. So this year I've been using these rods. Got one on right now. Anyways, We've been using these rods this year, and I, I've fallen in love with this rod. Um, it's it's light action, it's short. I like a short rod when I'm fishing like this, especially you get a couple guys or a couple clients in the boat. Um, you can match it up with whatever reel you like. Jason's got some reels. This happens to be my True Blue Dave's uh, reel from Ice Fishing. I, I happen to like this. I took it off, and uh, I, I've been using this, and it's uh, it's matched up as a good combination for me. but. You know, I can't say enough about these rods. Uh, you can feel everything with them. They're nice and small. You can maneuver around when you got a lot of people in the boat. And uh, boy, they stole away good as well. Yeah, we're just bouncing that nice and slowly across the bottom, lifting it. You know, trying to keep a couple inches off the bottom. Wait for that tick. Oh, there's one right there. That's a good one. I'm tighten up the drag a little bit. Oh, nice fish. These are some nice fish we're catching here today. I'm going to try to hoist them. Let's see if we can get them. Oh! <laughs> You're going to be able to hoist this one, guys. What a blast out here today catching these fish, I'm telling you.
One last thing that I wanted to mention to you guys is if you're out here fishing the spawn, um, you know, it's nice to take some fish. We all like to eat fish, but it's also good to put some back so we can come back and catch some tomorrow and even in the future generations so your kids, your grandkids can come back. Um, so I want to show you, I got some white crappies. We're not keeping any fish today. We only kept some for pitcher purposes. And uh, I want to show you what the difference between the males and the females are. Um, this time of the year, the males really get into their color, so they darken up. Um, so it's pretty easy to tell what the males are. And if you want to go out and keep that male, I'm not saying you can't keep some females and stuff. Um, but, you know, the males are right there at the same time, and you, you might as well keep the males. So let me see if I can dish you guys out some fish here. Easy, girl. Easy, girl. Now here we got a female. You can tell with a female, um, you know, it looks like your typical white crappy. But you can also see she's got a bulge in her belly. She's not spawned out. So, you know, ultimately we like to put them back, you know, so they can go and do their spawn. And then we can have some more. Now, we got one male in here. He's a little bit smaller, but I think he's got the good color so you'll be able to see. Now, if you, as you can see, this male's a lot darker. Really black, really beautiful fish. Um, I'm going to see if I can, I don't know if they're going to flop on me or not, but I'm going to try to get a female out too so you can kind of see the difference. There we go. <laughs> well, it's not going to work as well as we wanted it to, but as you can see, the males are really dark in color. Um, so, if you want to be conscientious about these fish and have some there for the next day and some for your kids, grandkids, um, you know, keep those males, put those females back. Uh, just keep a few. It's, uh, this is, this is, you know, something that we all want to have and be able to do forever and be able to share with the generations to come. Hope you enjoyed your time here. I'm your host, James Valatica from Fish Hounds Outdoors. See you on the water.